Welcome back guys. Today again we're talking news, reviews and announcements of everything in the camera world. I do this once a month where I go out and find out all the best news for you, all the big announcements and put it into one video for you guys to watch. We're going to break down everything that's happened in the last 30 days or so and find out if you know everything there is to know that's worth knowing. Here we go. Just like that, DJI jumps into the ring with its new action cam, the Osmo Action. Basically a GoPro with a front facing screen. And this thing looks like it's got a ton of great features including some awesome stabilization, some great quality and an attractive price at around 350 American dollars. Keep an eye out for reviews on this thing as it pours onto the market. Another company getting out of their comfort zone this month is Peak Design, unveiling their new tripod system which is said to be super light and compact and also packs a heck of a price tag and I don't know if it's just me but if you see the pictures and the videos of this thing it doesn't look overly stable I'm wondering what we're paying for here of course it's always great to see new products but let's keep it reasonable well this beast from Fuji was just announced the GFX 100 medium format mirrorless camera sporting an insane 102 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor capable of outputting 16-bit raw imagery. This thing is crazy. And it should be for 10,000 American dollars, or right now about 13,500 Canadian dollars. I'll tell you what, I'll put an affiliate link in the description. If you're gonna buy this camera, please go ahead and use my link. And if it's out of your budget, don't worry. You can lease it for as low as $347 a month. Or, you know, a car. More chatter as far as the Sony A92 and of course the A7S 3 goes, but no announcement as of yet. We're hoping for later this year. And to keep up to date with all this good stuff every single month, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. Adobe goes insane this month, threatening users that they could be sued for using outdated versions of their products as well as doubling the price of the most basic and most popular photography plan including Lightroom and Photoshop. I personally think this is a terrible move. A lot of amateurs and hobbyists rely on this to get in the door. They're not going to pay 20 bucks a month. They're going to find other software that's cheaper or free. I don't see this going over well. But on a good note, Adobe has added a new texture slider to Lightroom. So this slider is actually going to enhance texture on one end and smooth on the other, like a cross between sharpening and noise reduction. It should be interesting to play around with. Quite a few lens announcements this month, including the Canon 85 1.2 for the RF mount. Wildly expensive, but we'll have to see how that goes. You can pre-order it now, and it ships June 20th. Canon's also finally announced their Holy Trinity, a 15 to 35, 24 to 70, and an impressively small 70 to 200. So it looks like the roadmap for Canon's RF mount is finally coming along. Now if they could only figure out their camera bodies. Keep an eye out for the world's first 100 millimeter two times ultra macro lens by Laowa. I think I'm saying that right. This is a manual focus lens, but at 450 bucks, it looks pretty awesome. You can pre-order it now and it ships late May, early June, and you can get it for Nikon, Canon, or Sony mounts. Here's another one that caught my eye right away. Of course, Tamron's been killing it with their wildly popular 28-75, announcing this new 35-150 to variable f2.8 to f4, claiming incredible portrait quality of four prime lenses in one. I'm definitely going to have to check this one out. And with the upcoming release of Tamron 17 to 28, I see good things in their future. But I'm still waiting for a Sony telephoto. And speaking of Sony, apparently having 24% of the overall worldwide market and growing, it's been a great year for them. We can't say the same for Canon, of course, which is struggling a bit. And Nikon, well, let's look what happened with Nikon. So about a week ago, Nikon dropped its much anticipated firmware update for the Z6 and 7, adding eye detection, AF performance, and overall stability updates. And then just a few days later, basically issues a recall on both of these cameras. 
Apparently the IBIS on the Z6 and 7 isn't performing as it should. This is a massive inconvenience. Spend the time, get it right the first time, release it when it's ready. Next for all you drone users out there, be aware of new FFA rules and regulations for drones from basically this moment forward. And every month that goes by it seems like more and more countries are cracking down on recreational drone use, but it's really important to be aware and up to date on the laws so you don't get these massive ridiculous fines that they're implementing. Safety first. And you can now buy the world's fastest 1TB micro SD card from SanDisk for $450. And I'm not really sure who needs this, or why this even exists. But while we're on the subject of SD cards, the chairman of the SD Association, yeah that's a thing, well he believes the new SD Express standard will be adopted by camera makers in 2021, being 10 times faster than your regular SD UHS-1. I'm on board. And this one I had to throw in. This was kind of something that I thought was a little bit nuts. And it's not very often that we go backwards in technology, but maybe I'm crazy. Tell me if I'm wrong. But this Ricoh executive thinks that mirrorless photographers will soon return to DSLRs within a few years. And just personally me, I think this is going to age about as well as this article that was written a few years ago, and we all know how that turned out. I don't know, but from where I'm sitting, Mirrorless is the future. And finally, I had to share this with you. All the way up here in Canada, you've seen the exchange rate. Our stuff is expensive. I guess a little too expensive. And this clown makes off with a Sony a7R 3 with a 16 to 35 G Master. Great setup, but, but I would have gone for the A9. Don't be this guy. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it, and if you did, hit that like and subscribe button, and drop your questions and comments down below. I'll leave a link to all the articles below as well, so you can check them out in more detail. And if you wanna buy anything or pre-order anything that we talked about, I will leave the links as well for those. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time, guys.